started. Okay, so we have gathered here today to work some more on our current work in progress uh, working title collision course. And uh, today I'm going to recap some of the scenery and some of the events that we explored and discovered yesterday. Um, and uh, the situation is that uh, two of our viewpoint characters, aka Scrap, um, scrap Dealer Nolly and uh, a yet uh, to be named uh, Scribe, codenamed Steve, uh, they have come across uh, certain uh, suspicious materials and now they are working together uh, to find out more about those materials because reasons. Uh, and uh, because those materials include a lists of people, they are starting to track down some of those people and the first first contact that they go after uh, is in the bigger moon of Egrana 4 which dun 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 is also uh, the uh, uh, the location where one of my my personal solo work in progress uh, stories takes place but it's a different time, it's a different reality, it's a different season, and it's the different side of that moon. It was a different time. <laughs> yes. Uh, so, essentially, our guys, or the boys, uh, uh, the boys uh, approach the planet. Uh, oh, just, just a little recap. Uh, Egrana is a system with uh, twin suns or twin stars uh, and uh, I don't know about the rest of the system but uh, one of the uh, most human optimal planets is uh, is Ekrana 4 uh, which incidentally is the landing place of a sort of international collaboration expedition so the uh, the local civilization there is uh, is a generous mix of various uh, uh, European and African and maybe Australian uh, uh, companies and uh, and startups and and what have you. Uh, and among those, uh, uh, there is a sizable uh, future Estonian population. So <laughs> basically. This is this is uh, this is all my doing, <laughs> 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 right? And uh, and it was a it used to be a very sort of a, a very a rather lavish and a rather uh, cozy homeworld, but in this particular reality, uh, there has to be uh, there there has been some sort of uh, a fight and warfare. Uh, between some of the local culture cultures and some of their quote unquote bad relatives from uh, from a different system so it's ba basically uh, relatives gone bad bringing in bigger friends uh, little quibbles escalating etc 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 so uh, we are not going to address much of it uh, in this story uh, but uh, when Nali and Scribe approach the planet and make their first uh, orbits to sync up with the uh, with the moons and and such, then I think they might be able to observe uh, some long-term damage from the orbit because uh, uh, certain locations and certain uh, coastlines were like bombed to smithereens and we're talking orbital orbital strikes yo <laughs> no, no. yeah so this would be like uh, half a generation or even a full generation later uh, but uh, but some of the damage should still be visible and uh, 
those people, once prosperous, should also be sort of like uh, either many of them are, are fugitives, many of them, those who who are still alive on surface, those uh, their lives of, of those have severely changed. Uh, and in the middle of all this, we we have the bigger moon, uh, which in some regards is a super uh, super handy super super optimal but on the other hand it's uh, it's not very comfy living space so the the bigger moon would have most of its oceans uh, uh, drawn to the planet side and I might be wrong, but this this should be somewhat realistic. Like the sort of water mass gets drawn towards the planet because the moon is tidally locked, etc. So so roughly speaking, you you get uh, the two sides with a very different uh, landscape. Like you have mostly uh, mostly oceans and seas on the planet side, and mostly. Uh, mountains and plateaus and volcanoes uh, on the far side and of course there there would be the intermediate uh, areas and and transition transition zones uh, and uh, places where narrow seas cut into the landmass and places where the uh, volcanic land extends uh, farther into the seas and so on and on this transitional area you would get uh, uh, rather severe storms especially when the day slash uh, season is, is changing which it is rather often <laughs> so this is this is the place where our heroes have tracked down uh, a person of interest uh, who this person is, what they do is currently undetermined and uh, it is not immediately pro plot relevant either, but they're they're coming here. Uh, another sort of important uh, note is that uh, uh, there's there's not too much uh, regular uh, human settlement uh, on that moon uh, because basically it, it just doesn't pay off. Uh, the the planet is so comfy. And uh, and like the only uh, the only human settlements or the main main source of human settlements you have on that moon are the undersea farms and and industry. So everything is is work related. Uh, and among those, you might have some super rich people who have the means to. Uh, build their own abode under the ocean and and have their own means to come and go as they please. But for the common folk, uh, we do have uh, industrial spaceports which don't really accommodate to uh, casual human travelers. So it's like mm. it's it, it's it's all set up to transport goods and 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 resources and. Uh, the people are expected to, you know, sit on the grate <laughs> and so on, metaphorically speaking. Uh, you want to add or or uh, poke in with something, or ask questions? No, I mean it's pretty much reiterated what mm. we went through yesterday in in very fine detail. <laughs> I will say, if this is what you expected out of me, then we. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, yeah. I was I was trying to get uh, I was trying to trick Nox into recapping yesterday so that uh, uh, he would get more familiar with this uh, stuff. But <laughs> I can see the merit of me going on tangents here. Yeah, to be honest, I'm learning way more, or not learning what. Yeah. A much deeper understanding of what we yeah. went through yesterday. So I think this was the better outcome. Yeah, yeah. Thing. So uh, anywho. Uh, our hero or the boys uh, are approaching this, uh, this 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 planet and its moons, and uh, 
we we haven't decided uh, whether they are both on one ship or if either one of them is still in their own ship. So either either way, uh, we have two guys, two ships, uh, one destination. Uh, in the previous entry, they uh, they flew together. They are prob they probably have uh, tethered the ships together. Uh, or, or maybe even uh, docked them somehow, uh, and uh, so they they approach, they ob observe uh, doodads uh, on the planet surface, they observe the moon. Uh, there might be some handy exposition via database entry, or or or, or scribe will uh, try to keep himself busy uh, iterating what's what's out there. And uh, they will be able to negotiate themselves a landing spot. And by landing spot, I mean that uh, they they will uh, dock to the upper atmosphere slash uh, low orbit part uh, of the local of the of that industrial spaceport. Uh, essentially, we're we're talking about a large scale complex of space elevators uh, that transport. Uh, goods into uh, higher altitudes where you don't have to exert as much uh, thrust to uh, to get them out. Uh, so yeah, uh, they will not be able to uh, bring their ships down to the ground. They will have to uh, dock with the port facilities and then they will have to sit in quarantine sometime and uh, we will present a nice contrast here with the civilian port uh, quarantine lounge that we described in Seeker that has like uh, comfy lounge chairs and, and, and you get to order drinks even though it's expensive and and you, you get to you get to chill but here uh, essentially you have to you have to share the uh, warehouse with some herrings and algae <laughs> metaphorically speaking metaphorical herrings <laughs> uh, and I think the, uh, uh, the description that I worked out yesterday was that da -da 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 -da, can you find it for me uh, something something capsule furniture uh, everywhere it, this is the only link for capsule furniture I think in the document Everywhere gives that industrial slash skimpy vibe. Uh, I think I might have it. Okay, I, I see all my typos. <laughs> uh, I, I think I think I I might have it elsewhere, or maybe I was just thinking it. But basically, yeah, the where the warehouse area slash uh, makeshift quarantine uh, is only uh, is only filled with the. Uh, with shipping containers and capsule furniture and mm -hmm. uh, tangent ahead uh, te technology tangent so ca by capsule furniture uh, I mean the sort of mm, it's items made out of uh, flexible nanofiber like, like nano nanofiber grid that when manufactured is still flexible uh, you basically print out a shape uh, squeeze it into a capsule seal the capsule and when you need that item you break the capsule and you f and you uh, throw the mesh out it will take shape and solidify uh, in air so there has to be some sort of chemical doodad in the pr in, in the process and once it's solidified, uh, then you can't fold it back, so it's like one-off thing. Uh, it's used for uh, quick industrial uh, uh, carcass thingies. Uh, you can use it as a cheap, like uh, cheap instant furniture can be deployed this way uh, if you're say on a secret military mission then this makes for 
uh, quick building solutions. Uh, it's portable, quick, dirty, and, uh, and, and not not very nice design. I mean, I guess it would have its sort of utilitarian beauty in it, but it's it's not something that you show your fancy dinner quest, quest uh, guests. It's uh, it's like pallets and crates and and, and 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 like quick quickly deployable stuff basically. Mm -hmm. I think the word we used yesterday was like uh, it, it serves a purpose. Yeah, yeah. It's a it's a very uh, very purpose built uh, stuff. And and indeed in this. Uh, uh, in this warehouse, the only chair you can sit on is. Oh, I I think it might even be uh, nice to add a description here uh, that there isn't any furniture there, but the uh, but they can purchase or they are given a few of those those capsules that they will then have to break and and wait until the uh, the chairs uh, unfold and uh, uh, and solidify. add quickly that they have to deploy the uh, nano furniture or the uh, capsule furniture it's like oh uh, dude can we have some chairs or, s or something okay pay me uh, they pay. <laughs> they they pay. Uh, okay, here here you go. And uh, the guard or the harbor master put gives them like two little like think Kinder eggs. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> like, this is it. Well, yeah, you you break it open and then it pops out. <laughs> 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 okay. So oh and. Uh, so while they are in in the quarantine, while they wait, uh, they might have a little uh, building montage, because one key feature about uh, this particular moon is that it has a very strong magnetic field, uh, which interferes with lots of uh, communication technology, uh, which means that as their ships are in orbit, and they are on the ground. Uh, Scribe would not have direct access to his ship. So basically, Scribe will go into full fieldwork mode. Uh, he has to uh, gear up his suit. He, he he has to be able to record things. He will have. Uh, he has to be able to observe. Uh, like basically, a computer in your back. And uh, this is where the boys uh, will have their first sort of uh, working together for better results kind of moment because uh, Nolly will uh, quickly add some enhancements to his own suit uh, or, or, or like uh, come up with some on the spot gear so that uh, so that scribe can do his so that scribe can scribe better <laughs> basically <laughs> yeah, so that so that they can uh, do the uh, data uh, uh, data work and uh, data data processing and data storage better and and that they will retain the communication ability uh, and and Nali might also carry some signal boosters. Uh, and and so on. So basically, a little training uh, building montage uh, with some makeshift uh, scribes assistant suit making. Now, uh, as they get to the ground or or get out of the port area, uh, I would say that it is like late afternoon slash uh, autumn of this 
particular moon day so it is rather warm but uh, uh, the light is already starting to uh, carry over to the other side to the further side and uh, since this this is like this is ocean side and it has been directly uh, in in the sunlight or in the starlight there's there's lots of uh, there's lots of fog and and cloud cover here so everything seems to be gray the the sea is gray the land is gray it's like gray upon gray and ashes upon ashes uh, so this is where the other key feature of this moon comes to play is that the atmosphere is very oxygen rich which is good for uh, various life forms so it, it has a very rich and very varied uh, life especially uh, in the ocean uh, which makes it uh, good farming grounds and, and, and uh, picking stuff but at the same time, uh, you're walking in a constant fire hazard. So the <laughs> so the uh, beaches are like uh, grey and ashen. Uh, there's also uh, quite a bit of volcanic activity. So there's so the soil is comprised of volcanic ash, and then you might have the top layer of immediate ash uh, where the grass burned. And and then there's uh, maybe some ash particles uh, in the clouds, which makes which makes everything even more grey and sort of uh, uh, I wouldn't say grim, but it's yeah, it's it, it's it's a world of drudge. And uh, the uh, the plant life uh, that uh, that takes on here is small, resilient spiky uh, with with short uh, like they 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 mostly comprise of twigs and 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 uh, twigs and thorns and uh, and like everything with sort of strong cover that uh, that can survive the uh, immediate uh, fire hazard and uh, in the spring slash uh, morning e morning time you you might get like some very vivid uh, blossoms uh, on uh, on twigs without leaves and and you might get the, the sort of uh, vivid coloration of uh, lichens and moss and, and that sort of thing but uh, when that uh, brief period of uh, of blossoming is over then again everything turns into greys and browns and 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 dark now our heroes take in all this uh, <laughs> uh eerie beauty uh, and uh and uh, their next uh, uh mission is to find a vehicle that would take them to the settlement where the person of interest uh, is supposed to live so uh, the current thinking is that uh, they hire some, let's call them fishermen for 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 the sake of simplicity, but probably they are like algae farmers or scrap collectors or, or whatever. So basically, beach people, <laughs> the beach combers. So the the local beach comber, uh, uh, so not society, uh, community. Everybody does their own thing, and like uh, they they found they find this one dude who has a hover cart that goes into that direction because he's taking something there or he's picking up something, and uh, they are able to ne negotiate the price, and the guy takes them halfway to the desired destination, and then he just drops them like, yep, yeah, okay, this is this is this is where I will turn back because. I will now have to take these uh, space herrings to the port or or something. And uh the guy's like, "Uh, okay. <laughs> but how do we get there?" "Well, you know where it is." blah blah blah. So so basically they they dropped off uh, still off the mark. 
and uh, they will try to find some help from more of the locals who again just try to mind their own business and uh, uh, and the locals sort of inquire like so uh, what w what your idiots doing here <laughs> and they're like uh, we need to get there <laughs> like oh my you knew how to pick the time like, what mm. well we're we're just gonna walk there then like no you won't see see that uh, that dark uh, pillar out there in the horizon that's a storm forming <laughs> you, you better find yourself a shelter so basically they will take shelter with these people and I'm thinking they these people have like a uh, undersea bunker uh, that has a beach access so like they they can access it on the ground or on on the shore, but uh, the actual dwelling is I is deeper under sea because that's safer there, and uh, you will have uh, more controlled atmosphere there, and all that. I, for one, am very enthusiastic about the Chaos Nova Outrunners crossover. <laughs> 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 uh, well, not that sort of a bunker. I, I think it's it's yeah, more no, it's no, more no. of a it's more of a dwelling. But it's mm. uh, but it by design it has to be uh, proofed against uh, the local conditions. Yeah. So, in our terms, it's a bunker. In their terms, it's a cottage, an undersea cottage. Yeah. And uh, and that Probably this. Not built with asbestos. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and at this point, our heroes, the boys, uh, will find themselves with the locals waiting out the storm and uh, they will get information from locals and learn a lot about uh, this world and its moon and maybe even some old stories and this is about as far as we got yesterday <laughs> just just a simple thing yeah <laughs> nothing nothing fancy <laughs> yeah uh, questions additions comments no, there are some bits I'm looking forward to, uh, like obviously I'm into the building montage and <laughs> the Nali and Scribe bartering mm -hmm. their way off to a non-sanctioned personal transport sort of thing. Mm -hmm. um, but, and the whole, this is as far as I go deal is, Yeah. I'm looking forward to that. <laughs> so, not anything that needs explaining or anything, like I think I'm in a similar headspace. Mm -hmm. um, sort of some golden moments that I'm looking forward to. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think I've got anything else to that. Like the progression after this point is eventually I make it to the village mm -hmm. or, or the settlement and um, do their thing and I think when when they then leave this place that's when scribes like, oh hey can I join you mm -hmm. on, on board or do you want to join me on board or, or how we'll, however we decide to do it. So. Uh, the point I'm trying to make here is we've already sort of got notes for the events that come after mm -hmm. this as well, so yeah. I mean we're slotting some pieces into place and we're just yeah. you know, things are coming together quite nicely, I think. At this stage, at, like we're not we're not at the point where we're writing the thing yet, but as as this is our work process, I think things are going quite mm -hmm. well. Yeah, so this this is like outlining with some fragments sprinkled in. Mm-hmm. Uh, right. I yeah. I reckon the work that we've done, especially for, uh, since Zakharana's come up, you've sort of just taken it and run with it, and <laughs> I've watching that, right? I've, like, you obviously understand the environment that we're about to inhabit, um, so sitting back and watching you just run with it <laughs> is great fun. Uh, I'm really enjoying that. Hmm. Um, so, yeah. That's all I've got, I think. Oh, I'm... I'm enjoying myself as well <laughs> 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 obviously <laughs> okay I'm gonna uh, bank this uh, recording and then mm -hmm. we shall see what else we might have for today yeah. if anybody watched us this far or listened thank you very much we might do some more bye bye